In this video, I'm going to show you two different types of pollen traps, how to fit them on hives, how to harvest them, and then how to use that pollen to make bee bread. So until a few weeks ago, I had no idea what bee bread was. There's all this hype on the, on the internet about a superfood that, that comes from beehives called bee bread. So I knew nothing about it and I had no interest in, in harvesting pollen from our hives. I was just interested in beekeeping, pollination, honey production and that kind of thing. And then people started asking me, oh, do you, do you sell bee bread? Do you make bee bread? And I decided, okay, we're going to look into, into the whole bee bread thing. In a nutshell, bee bread is a blend of pollen and honey that when fermented creates the superfood. Pollen on its own, the, the human body can only digest between 15 and 18 percent of the nutrients inside the pollen. But once it's fermented with honey, the human body can digest between 80 and 90 percent of that. If you don't know what pollen is, pollen is a fine powder produced by flowers of trees and plants. It is highly rich in protein, amino acids and vitamin C, as well as many other things. The pollen trap I built, quite a simple uh, device that just fits on, on the front of a hive. I just built it out of pallet wood and I used some of the aluminium sheeting that we, we sheet our hives with and had an old queen excluder that uh, I cut up just to create a grid for the pollen to fall through and what I did was I just doubled it up so it's staggered so that the bees can't fit through it but the pollen can fall through it. It's just what I had. I didn't have any mesh or anything like that. So how it works is you fit this over your hive that the bees are forced to go through these holes. These are four millimeter holes so I found that anything bigger than four millimeters the bees carry all the pollen through. When it's four millimeters, the worker bees can still fit through. If the sacs are big enough, it, it pushes off their legs. But I found that it's less than 1% of the pollen is actually actually being pulled off their legs. They managed to pull the rest of the holes. It's not at all detrimental to the, the hive. And we only, only leave these on normally for between three and five days. So how it works is trap is just fitted onto the front of a hive so that the entrances are completely closed off and the bees have to go through these gaps. Then it's just, it's just put on with two screws over here and then your basket just slides in there. Bees can't get in there. Any pollen that falls from these holes as the workers go through falls into the basket. And then we've got this pollen trap which I ordered online. It uh, works pretty much the same. It's got a big grating system in the front. The bees squeeze through. I did find that the, the holes were significantly bigger on top than four millimeters so very little of the pollen actually gets pulled through into this tray didn't work as great but it works pretty much the same principle yeah okay let's get to the apiary and fit these on hives and see if we can collect any pollen okay let's put on the homemade trap first so ideally you want to do it in a time of day where it's not so busy where you don't have to contend with thousands of workers coming in and out of the hive Okay, let's put our tray in. Okay, let's put this plastic pollen trap on. So these types only fit onto these types of hives. Put the tray in. So we're back to remove the pollen trap, which we put on the 11th of March, 2024. And today is the 15th of March 2024. So it's had approximately four days, except we did have two days of rain. So that will definitely influence the, um, the amount of pollen that's gone in the hive. But anyway, let's, let's take it off and have a look. Okay, let's see what's in the tray. There is some pollen in there, not a hell of a lot of pollen like we have had from other other hives uh, with this with the same pollen trap. Uh, like in the we, we did make a, a video previously where we did harvest a lot more weather and 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 
and volume of, of pollen available and the environment will definitely influence this. But there's a little bit there. So at least we know it works. So let's go and have a look at the plastic bought pollen trap. Also put on the 11th. Today's the 15th. So let's have a look what we get. Propolis this trap on a bit. Now let's see what we got. Very little. So you can see there is a little bit of pollen in there, but significantly less than the home built DIY trap. These these hives are within a hundred meters of each other, so they have access to the same food sources. So we can confidently say that the homemade trap wins. So this is what your bee bread looks like once it has fermented. This is now three weeks. So all, all you do is when you have your pollen in here, your dry pollen, it can be about a 50-50 mix. So you fill this up with pollen and then you just fill it up with honey. And you can do it once or twice a day. You just keep flipping it over. You leave it for a couple of, hour, a couple of hours or a day and then you flip it over. So what happens is the, the dry pollen keeps rising to the top and when you flip it, it's now at the bottom and then rises to the top again and then the, the fermentation process starts. So people ask me what it tastes like. Here we go. Let's let's give it a taste. Let's see. Let's try and open this jar. There we go. So that's what it looks like. When it comes out, it's quite a thick, gummy type substance. Let's try it. So it's obviously sweet from the honey. It's got like a, you can taste uh, like, I don't know if it makes any sense, but like thousands of different flowers. It actually tastes pretty nice. Uh, it's the first time I've actually tasted it straight out of the jar. I normally take tablespoons into smoothies and blend them up, but uh, that actually tastes pretty good. We knew superfood could actually be made so easily and taste so good. So if you're a beekeeper, now you know how easy it is to make bee bread. And if you're not a beekeeper, then I suggest you start beekeeping. It's an awesome thing to do. Uh, there's a link in the description below on, on, on how you can get started. And please like and subscribe. We really appreciate it. We'll see you on the next video. Cheers.